Hello Skeletons, it is Disney Queen Skelly here, and welcome back to another Versus video. So this one is for the Haunted Mansion here at Disneyland versus the Haunted Mansion over at Florida. Now, I've been on both, and personally, I will say for not aesthetic purposes, but for aesthetic purposes and for entertainment-wise, Florida did it way better. But we'll discuss more about that at the end. For now, I'm going to read you guys these articles on what I found about both Haunted Mansions uh, in both parks, and then maybe let me know in the comment section down below which one's your favorite. Let's get started. First, we are going to be talking about the Haunted Mansion here at the Disneyland Resort. On August 9, 1967, the doors of the Haunted Mansion first creaked open to ghoulish ghosts and guests looking for an unbelievable home. Unlivable home. Today, all foolish mortals are able to visit this spirited attraction in New Orleans Square at Disneyland Park. The Haunted Mansion at Disneyland was the first major Disney attraction to open without the direct supervision of Walt Disney. Although Walt reviewed many early concepts and visionettes, he never saw the completed show. Construction for the Haunted Mansion attraction began in 1961, and the exterior of the attraction was completed in 1963. It was unoccupied until 1969, while Walt Disney participated in the 1964-65 New York World's Fair, and his Imagineers were retasked to work on those timely projects. The World's Fair experience made way for some of the technology that's used in the Haunted Mansion. During the early period before the attraction opened, a tantalizing, witty sign was displayed outside of the Haunted Mansion which read, Notice, all ghosts and restless spirits post-lifetime post leases are now available in this Haunted Mansion. For reservations, send resume of past experience to Ghost Relations Department, Disneyland. Please, do not apply in person. As you enter the Haunted Mansion, you are taken into the portrait chamber featuring some of the ghosts in their corruptible mortal state. Suddenly, the chamber begins to stretch, and once you stop, you are led into a hallway filled with eerie lighting and transforming portraits. Shortly thereafter, as you enter the Doom Buggy, the ghost host greets you and prepares to take you on your haunting journey. Your tour of the Haunted Mansion offers a ghostly glimpse into the afterlife, including the seance conducted by Madame Leota, a ghostly party in the Grand Hall complete with dancing and a birthday cake, followed by a trip up to the abode's attic where a far-from-blushing bride and the hatbox ghost reside, all before ending up in the graveyard where the ghosts of the Haunted Mansion have gathered for a swinging wake. Here are some frightening fun facts. The idea for the haunted house at Disneyland was included in an early concept design sketch by Harper Goff, dating back to 1952, when Disneyland was still being conceptualized. Within a week of the Haunted Mansion's opening, Disneyland celebrated what was then its highest single-day attendance. Twenty tombstone tributes exist both inside and around the exterior of the attraction. The epitaphs on the tombstones were written to, horror, to honor several Disney legends and Walt Disney Imagineers who created and maintained the attraction. The final exterior concept for the house is heavily influenced by the Victorian-era Shipley Lidecker House in Baltimore, Maryland. Thorold Ravenscroft is the voice of Uncle Theodore who leads the Phantom Five Quintet of Singing Headstones. His voice can also be heard in the... In, at Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room as the voice of both Fritz and Tangaora. The pipe organ scene in the ballroom sequence was featured as Captain Nemo's pipe organ in the Disney film classic 20,000 Links Under the Sea. Leota Toombs, a former Walt Disney Imagineer and Disney legend, served as the famous face of Madame Leota. The hackbox ghost was featured in Haunted Mansion when the attraction first opened, then he mysteriously vanished only to reappear in 2015 in the time for the 60th anniversary of Disneyland. The ghosts of the Haunted Mansion are just dying for you to join them, as there is always room for one more. Next, we'll be looking at the Haunted Mansion in Walt Disney World. Opened October 1st, 1971. Ride length 7 minutes and 30 seconds. Overview slash history. Follow the howls of the wolf to the special eff effects and ghostly gags of the Haunted Mansion. 999 happy haunts, but there's always room for one more. This popular attraction starts to line up outdoors under a canopy. The mansion itself is of the gothic style reminiscent of the 18th century Hudson River Valley structures. An interactive cube takes guests through a graveyard with gravestones and interactive crypts paying tribute to Imagineers of all the creation of the attraction. This area will help pass time as the line can grow to be extremely long during the peak seasons. As you approach the mansion, butlers and maids, always in character, greet you at the door and escort you in the library or stretching room 
Does the ceiling go up or does the floor go down? Tip. Remember to watch the picture over the fireplace changing as you are entering the room. The guests move on to the awaiting doom buggies for the journey through the mansion. This ride tells the story of a black widow bride and her many husbands. The special effects are, terif are terrific, especially the dwellers in the ballroom scene and the staircase scene. In typical Disney fashion, attention is paid to the finest detail. You'll notice something different every time you go on this ride. While not seriously frightening, you may want to think twice about bringing very young kids on this one. Don't forget to check out the ghost horse hearse out front. Fast pass, yes. Handicap accessibility. Guests must be able to transfer from wheelchairs. Fun fact. At Disneyland, the Haunted Mansion was completed by 1963, but the Imagineers couldn't decide what to do with the inside. This delayed the opening of the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland for several years until 1969. So like I said, me personally, I prefer the Walt Disney World one. And the only reason why is because when we went, we went in August, which was the stupidest thing to do because that was peak season. You know, we actually went on twice because we got fast passes, which was really, really cool. So the first time we went on, I was able to check out the line queue because even though we had the fast passes, hubby was like, I want you to go in the actual line queue because when you do fast pass, you don't get to experience the line queue as much. So I noticed all of the, the, you know, the buttons, all of the things you could do. And there was one that was particularly cool that I liked. It was this glass case and there was a book. It was a seance book. And it would ask you like trivia questions and I kind of looked, or it would ask you like riddles. And it, it heard your voice and it would tell you if you were right or wrong. So one of the questions was, I forget what the question was, but the answer was a tiger. And I said, a tiger? And all of a sudden it went, when it lit up green, I was like, oh my. <laughs> There's one where this guy's in like a, a bathtub, I think, or like something. It's about this guy who I think drowned at sea and it's like spitting water at you every so often. One thing I didn't know about that I actually have to look for next time we go, with, when I go next year with Holly Baby and Hubby, is on the floor at a certain point you can see a ring, a ring that the bride threw down, which was initially I think like a loose bolt or something, or it was where. Uh, a pole once stood, but now they made it into a ring, and it's really cool. It's like in the ground, you can see it. Um, there's one where you can push like different buttons, it'll make different sounds, and there's one where you could push like library books in and out. It's really cool. I mean, not to say I don't love the one here at Disneyland because I do, but at the same time, I feel like Florida has the right idea in making the queue interactive because people easily get bored in line. You know, the lines get very long, especially with us here at Disney, our lines get long too. And I feel, and especially in the summer, I feel like something like an interactive queue would actually help us, you know, keep people entertained while they're waiting in line to get onto the ride. But anyways, I thank y'all so much for watching. If you've gone on both attractions or one or the other, let me know which one's your favorite and why. Or if you want to go on one or the other, let me know the reason why too. And I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye, little skeletons. Stay safe. I love you guys.